All right, so here we are going to delve deep into, <clears throat> well, into the music of, the drumming of, Uriel Jones, one of the, the big three Motown drummers. Um, and, and, you know, he, he started getting busier with Motown later, um, you know, as, as Benny Benjamin got less consistent or less dependable, less reliable. Um, and, you know, he's he's got his own twist on it. But what what you find from checking these guys out, um, listening to interviews and, and hearing what they said, a lot of them were kind of emulating Benny, even if they were older than him. Um, I think he was a younger one than some of these. Anyway, he'd kind of... Um, kind of laid it out, the kind of Motown sound as far as the drumming goes. So they were always, to my understanding, kind of emulating his approach. But being human beings, uh, you know, inevitably, they shone through their own personality, their own nuances, their own kind of twists on things. So, um, you know, you'll hear these classic Motown feels. If anyone talks about Motown drumming, you know, you're gonna hear about these feels because they all, they all did them. So in the Benny Benjamin lesson um, on Total Drama, you know, we look at some of those feels, like the My Girl feel, and just some of the, the kind of that, that, that sort of classic, that classic feel, which is like bass drum, ba, 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 boom, three at a four, and, right? So the first track I want to look at of Uriel Jones here is the Tracks of My Tears, uh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, 1965. And we're looking at the intro here. So... We've got the same accents here, um, where we're going three e and a four and. So we're going to play the quiet left right on the on the like three e and a four and. So the three e and we're going to be quiet. We're going to stick it as right left right left right right. I'm just going to play that slowly. Okay, so it's such a classic feel. So you, often you'll count one, two, that's just silence, and then the pickup feel that we just did starts on beat three. Now, I initially thought the first note was on the high tom there, but I just had to re-listen, and I actually I, I heard it was on the snare. So um, so on, on mine here, I've just kind of amended it with some pen because I was like, no, I don't want to teach the wrong thing here. But you can just move these around. That's the beauty of these. So even if it does go... You can easily play it as or, or It kind of doesn't matter really. They all work. And it's the same rhythm. Back to g -ga -ga. So the way we count that is the silent one, two, so we go one, two. All right now where they will develop that groove is to sometimes play those two quiet notes as doubles now we're gonna look at that in a minute more specifically but with this song it's kind of hard to hear because of the kind of uh, you know the sound recording quality from back then and, and, and the mix which has that certain warmth that certain charm to it but it's sometimes harder to pick out exact intricacies on the drums so I'm not sure if that second right hand is a double or a buzz. So if I play it super slow, that would come out like this. To play that quicker. To hear it just gives it that little extra, little extra something. I was listening to it, I was like, maybe I can hear that, maybe I can't, maybe it's just snare, snare buzz, I don't know. Uh, so, but it could be there, it might not be there. Do it or don't do it. But we're gonna look at that more specifically in the next thing we look at here. Um, and then the groove after, which you can see here, is just a simple eight beat.
that kind of vibe, right? So let me give that to you um, at the correct speed, 96 BPM. Give my little metronome. So I'm gonna, so there's our speed. So I'm gonna one, two, two, good, 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 go. All right, here we, here we go. One, two. Next up, Temptations, 1966, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, uh, 120 BPM. So I want to look at this because it's, um, I just alluded to it a minute ago, it's the same feel, more or less, as the one we just did. And the same feel that you'll see in the Benny Benjamin lesson, and the same feel that you'll hear on about 7 million different Motown tracks. You know, if it ain't broke, um, but, the, the little difference on this one I want to look at is the second and third note. Now you see a little black dash through the stem. So that tells us that that one note is actually two notes that we're going to play as doubles. So if the first four notes that you see there are right, left, right, left, what we're actually going to play is right, left, left, right, right, left. So we just double up those two middle ones, okay? Just keeping it on the snare for now. So those first four notes, Without the doubles would go. With the doubles, which is that dash through the stem, there's the stem, we've got that little dash through it, right? We'd get this. So it sounds, it sounds pretty cool. So, you know, to do that, you've got to work your technique up to play the double. So if it feels out of reach right now on a technical level, that's fine, don't do it. But maybe maybe you'll feel inspired to put the practice in on your double strokes or on your buzzes or however you want to execute this. You know, if you, if you play it as double strokes, um, kind of open roll, you, you get that um, cleaner, more articulated sound, so doubles. And if you were to play it as buzzes, that sort of closed roll, you get that more buzzy sounds, they're less articulated. You know, so with all these things, everyone can do their own little thing, uh, but I think it's good to have the control to do it in all of the ways that are possible, um, but it's, it's up to you how you want to do it and what's comfortable to you right now. And if none of those are comfortable, don't do it. No one cares, all right? Um, but it's worth studying all these because all these little nuances can just have a subtle effect on, on, on the end result. So it, it's cool to study it. So first four notes again, which are actually six notes now we know this. Okay, and then it ends with four and again. Now the orchestration here is the first accent, the first right hand is on the high tom. Then we go snare, 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 snare with the left, left, right, right. Snare is that accent on the left hand. Then on beat four, snare accent on the right hand. Then we're going down to the floor tom for the last note. So we get this. If I count it, remember I'm going to count beats one and two, they're silent. And we're coming on beat three. One E and a two E and a. Okay, so it's a cool little extra layer of complexity to add in. So let me give you that feel. Let me give you that feel with the doubles, like it's written, and without the doubles, like we've looked at in the, in the previous song, right? So one of each, I'll just alternate a few times. Okay, so you can, you can hear the difference it makes. If they weren't there, you wouldn't necessarily miss them, but if they are there, they can help it sound extra cool. All right, next we're gonna move on to an awesome, 
I mean, an awesome track. So it's Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, uh, 1967, 130 BPM. So it's a great song, right? You know it's a great song. But not only is it a great song, what a drum beat. Such a cool drum beat. So, gotta stay hydrated. So, what I love about this is, we're playing up on the rim for some of these notes. So we're gonna go, you know, we've got the hi-hat pedal in here and we've got the bass drum. So we're going like, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. So the feet just play that on, in all the bars. And then what makes it sound really interesting is that da -ga -da -ga -ga, on bar one and, and bar three, well, it just all, oh no, sorry, because there is a slight difference on the bass drum in the fourth bar. I missed that. All right, so in bar one and bar three, we just go one, two, e and a three. Okay, so slowly, one, Two e and a three four out. Okay. So we're gonna do one bar of that, then one bar of just a foot osnato, then one bar with that again, and then the very last last bar. Just slightly changes the bass drum pattern. So it goes one, two, and then the bass is on the two and three and four and. So that goes one. So slight, slight change on the last bass drums. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the four bars up to speed. So hopefully you'll hear it and go, oh yeah. I've heard that lots of times. I recognize that. And then I'll play it much, much slower and I'll loop it so you can hear it. So here you go. I think it's this way. One, two, three, four. All right, so you probably wanted to start singing there, didn't you? Be honest, because that, because that's where the vocal would come in, more or less, where we're just about to uh, the next bar we're going into. So that's it. So what I would suggest you do here is learn the first bar with the digga digga da, super slow, and then obviously bar two is just the foot osnato that's already in bar one. Bar three is the same anyway, and then bar four is that slight different bass drum pattern. So let's do the four bars, the whole loop together, slowly, all right? After four. One, two, three, four. All right, and the last Uriel Jones uh, track I want to look at is, it's a Temptations track again from 1968. So it's towards the end of the 60s, pushing into the 70s. So we've got some more of this kind of funk, funky sort of disco vibe coming through now. So this doesn't really sound that Motown-y to me. Um, it's not what I consider to be the classic Motown sound. Um, but I think it's worth looking at because two reasons, one, it's using that fill again, it's that type of fill. So it's one, two, three, and a four, and one, two. All right, so that time played snare, 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 hi Tom. Gat, 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 boom. You know, they can't help themselves. They're transitioning into a new, they're sort of prepping up for the, uh, the 70s, 
they're revolving, but like, you know, they still want to use that cool feel. So there it is. But then we're going into what's more of a disco vibe, right? So we've got these uh, 16th note hi-hats, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, all the way. And what you can see here is bass, bass, snare. There's one and two. So it's first two basses with the first two right hands. And then can you see the accents here? So they fall on the A uh of two, the E and the A uh of three, and then beat four. So those accents will come in on the left, 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 right. So what I'm going to do is just play the hi-hat slowly so you can start to incorporate those accents, right? So three and a four E and a So now, that's the hi-hat part. Now let's add the snare in. So that's the right hand coming down on beat two. Three, four. One. And the final stage is the two bass drums at the beginning. One, and. So let's try the whole thing slow. Three, four. So that's the groove that powers a lot of this song. So let me just um, let me just get that on at get it on at one eighteen. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is the speed. So it's, it's kind of quick when you start adding sixteen. So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So I'm going to start with the fill. Gat ga gat gun. Gat gat ga ga. Gat gat ga ga. Alright, here we go. So, so that's it, that's it. Let me turn the click off in my ear. So, um, you know, that's the groove with the fill at the beginning. It's a tricky groove, you want to get those accents in there, so as always, start slow, gradually build it up. But you can see there, you know, some of those classic Motown feels there, um, but some nice nuances, like with the double strokes in Ain't Too, uh, Ain't Too Proud To Beg, that like really quite unique um, and just classic memorable groove in Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Um, and then up to his disco stuff at the end, so, so a nice little range of stuff there. Um, uh, from one of one of the one of the top Motown drummers.